Hello everybody, my name is Mia and welcome back to Health and Care. In today's video, I'm going to be explaining my understanding and my views of gender. I figure this would be sort of a helpful way to like contextualize my videos um, and just to sort of make it more clear about why I come to the conclusions that I come to, I want to explain my view on gender. Um, this is like my current views on gender. The way that I perceive gender is like constantly changing, always evolving based on my own personal experiences, but also the things that I read, the things that I study in school, the conversations that I have with people around me. Uh, so yeah, probably like in a while, I'll make another video updating my views on gender, but this is just my current takes. Um, and I thought I would share. So, um, First, I want to talk about two things that I don't think gender is. Um, the first is, I don't think gender is essentialist. So there are two reasons why I do not agree with gender essentialism. The first is that it states that your body determines who you are. We know that this isn't the case. We know that there are many factors that come into deciding what one's gender is. How because essentialism links the body to identity so closely, and because there are so many instances of where people's sex do not align with their gender expression or their gender identities, we know that this just can't be true. But in another more principled reason why I disagree with essentialism is that it homogenizes the experiences of women. So what I mean by this is that it assumes that if you have a certain body, you will have very similar or the exact same lived experiences as other people with the same body. So as we know from studying intersectionality, um, my femininity may be perceived very differently than the femininity of a black girl in Canada who's my age, or than a girl who lives in a different country. There are many factors that influence how our gender is perceived and how we express our gender. Just because people share the same body or share similar bodies, it doesn't mean that our experiences are the same. Further, a feminist scholar specifically points out that essentialist views of female body bodies um, are often very hegemonic. So this scholar's name is Uma Narayan, and in her paper Essence of Culture and a Sense of History, she points out that, quote, these generalizations are hegemonic and that they represent the problems of privileged women, most often white, western, middle class, heterosexual women. So gender essentialist views of feminism uh, often prioritize the experiences of one type of a female body as opposed to many different female bodies that exist. That's ultimately why essentialism is harmful. Now, on the other hand, you have something called dualism. And dualism, like very briefly, is the belief that mind and body, soul and body are separate entities and they don't interact with each other. Um, Though I don't believe in essentialism, I don't 100% believe in dualism in the traditional sense because throughout history, philosophers such as Plato um, and so on have sort of characterized the soul to be more important than the body. Um, however, this isn't always the case. It's important to recognize the role that the body plays in understanding your identity and your gender. So the point that I wanted to make in like talking about essentialism and dualism is that my view on gender is not strictly essentialist. I don't strictly believe that your body is your destiny, but I also don't strictly believe that gender is not linked to the body at all. I think that there can be ties between the mind and the body. Now that I've explained two things that I don't agree with, uh, I'm gonna start talking about some things that I do agree with. Uh, so first I wanna talk about Judith Butler. Judith Butler is a very well-known feminist from the second and third wave feminism movements. Uh, she's from the States and she presented these two key sort of ideas that I want to go through. And the first is that gender is a process. So in her book where she analyzes Simone de Beauvoir's second sex, she explains how, quote, gender is a modality of taking on or realizing possibilities, a process of interpreting the body and giving it a cultural form. So I really like how Butler explains that gender is a process of acquiring different traits, of acquiring aspects of femininity, of masculinity, of androgyny, and so on. And that's how you build up your gender identity. Now, Butler's second concept, which is very well known, which she talks about in her book, Gender Trouble, is that um, gender is a performance. So she explains how uh, gender is very much a social construct 
and people are raised to behave in certain ways that fit these gender roles. And in that sense, gender is not natural, rather it is a performance. Um, I like how this explains how gender isn't linked to biology. Um, there are certain components of Butler's analysis that I personally don't agree with and other people don't agree with. So a common critique of Butler is that she ignores how this gender performance can actually influence our identities a lot and gender is not just some abstract uh, concept that exists in a vacuum, rather it is something that actively engages with our lives. So this is where I want to bring in some existentialism. Um, I'm not an expert in this, but I think that it is a very unique perspective of life, purpose, essence, so on, especially when it is applied to gender. So uh, existentialism is a philosophy developed by Jean-Paul Sartre, um, and its sort of mantra is that existence precedes essence. So um, Sartre explains this in his book, Existentialism is a Humanism, and I think a quote that very clearly summarizes this is, man first of all exists, encounters himself, surges up in the world, and defines himself afterwards. So this explains how even though you are not defined exclusively by your body, the fact that you have your body is a very important factor in accessing your identity. Sartre explains how the body is a mode of intentionality uh, and it allows us to encounter certain things. So let's look at this sort of in a gendered way. And I'm gonna try to explain this as clearly as possible though, it's a bit confusing. So let's say a baby is born and they're assigned female at birth, they come home to their nursery from the hospital and the parents painted their bedroom pink. That is one factor that allows them to access a form of gender expression because throughout history, pink has been associated with femininity. This kid grows up, they go to kindergarten and at kindergarten, they are dressed in feminine clothes, but they become friends with some boys in their class. And the boys in their class teach this child about hockey. And all of a sudden this child loves hockey and it's all they can talk about. Now, in society, hockey and sports and so on are commonly associated with masculine traits. So in this sense, this child begins to adapt more masculine features of their gender identity. They still consider themselves to be a girl, but maybe they like certain aspects of masculinity and so on. They continue to grow up and hate wearing dresses. They reject that aspect of femininity. They grow up a bit more and start to realize, you know what, my eyes look really pretty when I wear mascara and they adopt that aspect of femininity. So as this individual grows on and experiences more things in society, interacts with more people, uh, understands how wearing certain clothes or wearing makeup makes them feel personally, they're able to access different parts of gender and create their gender as a whole. And then De Beauvoir in her book, The Second Sex, expands on this because her notion of becoming a gender is that you are your body from the start and then you slowly begin to access your identity and you slowly become your essence. The body is a mode for you to access and understand components of your identity. If not for your body, you wouldn't be able to have these unique insights into yourself. If my immediate reaction to being treated in a feminine way because of my feminine body is positive, is comfort, I'm not really thinking of it, then I am providing myself insight as to how I perceive my essence and how I perceive my identity. However, if I am uncomfortable in this feminine body and people are treating me in a feminine way, then I realize that maybe perhaps my essence and my identity is not so strictly related to my body. Our bodies are always gendered and from there we are able to recognize whether we agree with our assigned gender or an assigned sex or if we reject it. Um, so in this sense, our bodies play a really big role in understanding who we are. They can be used as a litmus test to assess which aspects of gender we feel comfortable with, which aspects we reject. Our body is the way in which we can access these experiments to have a better understanding of who we are. So just to summarize my views, um, I don't think that your gender has to be linked to your sex assigned at birth, but at the same time, the body does play an important role in becoming who you are and understanding who you are. And even if it is the case that gender is socially constructed and that gender is very performative, 
it doesn't mean that the body that you were born into doesn't play a role. Rather, your body allows you to access and experiment with gender and thus create your identity. Thank you guys for watching this video. I wanted to just sort of contextualize my views and understandings of gender, and I hope that this made sense. Leave any questions, comments below, and like and subscribe for more stuff. Um, and yeah, it was nice chatting with you guys. Bye.